please rise. Blessed is our God now and always and to the ages of ages. Amen. O come, let us worship God, our King. Come, let us worship and fall down before Christ, our King and God. Come, let us worship and fall down before Him, Christ, our King and our God. Bless the Lord, O my soul, O Lord my God. You are magnified exceedingly. You clothe yourself with thanksgiving and majesty. You cover yourself with light as with a garment. Who stretch out the heavens like a curtain. You are he who covers his upper chambers with waters. Who makes the clouds his means of approach. Who walks on the wings of the winds. Who makes his angel spirits and his ministers a flame of fire. He established the earth on its stable foundation. It shall not be moved unto ages of ages. The deep, like a garment, is his covering. The waters shall stand upon the mountains. At your rebuke, they shall flee. At the sound of your thunder, they shall be afraid. The mountains rise up, and the plains seek down to the place you founded for them. You set a boundary, they shall not pass over. Neither shall they return to cover the earth. You are he who sends springs into the valley. The waters shall pass between the mountains. They shall give drink to all the wild animals of the field. The wild asses shall quench their thirst. The birds of the birds of the ha- heaven shall dwell beside them. They shall sing from the midst of the rocks. You are he who waters the mountains from his higher places. The earth shall be satisfied with the fruit of your works. You are he who causes grass to grow for the cattle and the green plant for the service of man. To bring forth bread from the earth and wine gladdens the heart of man. To brighten his face with oil and bread strengthens man's heart. The trees of the plain shall be full of fruit. The cedars of Lebanon which you planted. There the sparrows shall make their nests. The house of the heron takes the lead among them. The high mountains are for the deer. The cliff is a refuge for the rabbits. He made the moon for seasons. The sun knows its setting. You established darkness and it was night, wherein all the wild animals of the forest will prowl about. The young lions roar and snatch their prey and seek their food from God. The sun arises and they are gathered together and they shall be put to bed in their dens. Men shall go out to his work and to his labor until evening. O Lord, your work shall be magnified greatly. You made all things in wisdom. The earth was filled with your creation. There is this great and spacious sea. The creeping things are there without number. The living things are there, both small and great. There the ships pass through. There is this dragon you form to play therein. All things wait upon you, that you may give them food in due season. When you give it to them, they shall gather it. When you open your hand, all things shall be filled with your goodness. But when you turn your face away, they shall be troubled. When you take away their breath, they shall die and return again to their dust. You shall send... You shall send forth your spirit, and they shall be created, and you shall renew the face of the earth. Let the glory of the Lord be forever. The Lord shall make glad the, show, the Lord shall be glad in his works. He looks upon the earth and makes it tremble. He touches the mountains and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord all my life. I will sing to my God as long as I exist. May my words be pleasing to him, and I shall be glad in the Lord. May sinners cease from the earth, and the lawless to us be no more. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Glory to the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Alleluia, 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 glory to thee, O God. Alleluia, 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 glory to thee, O God. Alleluia, 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 glory to thee, O God, my hope, O Lord, glory to thee. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the wealth of the holy churches of God, and for the union of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for those who enter with faith, reverence, and with the fear of God, let us pray to the Lord. For all the holy orthodox patriarchs and hierarchs, for the honorable priests of the diaconate in Christ, for all the clergy and the people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the president of our country, for all civil authorities and those who serve in the armed forces, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this city, every city and country, ever the faithful dwelling therein, let us pray to the Lord. 
Lord, have mercy. For favorable weather, for an abundance of the fruits of the earth, and for peaceful times, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For travelers by land, sea, and air, the, for the sick, the suffering, for their captives, and their salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For our deliverance from all affliction, wrath, danger, and necessity, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and keep us, O God, by thy grace. Lord have mercy. Commemorating our most holy, most pure, most blessed and glorious Lady Theotokos and ever Virgin Mary with all the saints, let us commend ourselves and each other and all of our life unto Christ our God. Oh, you, oh Lord. For unto you are due all glory, honor, and worship to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit now and ever and unto the ages of ages. transgressions, O Lord, who will stand, for there is forgiveness with you. Grant to me compunction and complete estrangement from every vice and correction of all my faults, for I have immersed myself in the carnal passions. I have become distant from you, my God and King of all, and I have no other hope except for you, O Jesus. The Almighty One, I pray you, save me the prodigal for surpassing benevolence as the Savior of our souls, O Lord. Because of your law, Lord, I waited for you. My soul waited for your word. My soul hopes in the Lord. Moses, who was God-inspired, once by fasting was purified. And 
when he saw him for whom he longed therefore humble soul of mine try to emulate him on this day of fasting and self restraint from every vice be all the more earnest to be purified and thus you will perceive the Lord to be benevolent and humane for forgiving your every sin as the master omnipotent. From the morning watch until night, from the morning watch until night, let Israel hope in the Lord. O brethren, let us cheerfully commence observing day by day the second week of Lent. From the four great virtues, let us make a fiery chariot for ourselves, like Elias the is bite through the through this passion let us raise up our mind and let us arm the flesh with chastity putting the enemy to flight and gaining the victory for with the Lord there is mercy and with him is abundant redemption and he shall redeem Israel from all his transgressions bravely enduring the present rejoicing in what they hoped for the holy martyr said to one another are we not stripping off our garments so let us also put off the old man winter is bitter but paradise is sweet freezing is painful but the reward is pleasant let us not waver, O oh fellow soldiers, let us endure for a little while, so that we may wear the crowns of victory that are given by Christ God, the Savior of our souls. Praise the Lord, all you Gentiles. Praise Him, all you peoples, throwing off all their garments, and Entering the lake without flinching, O holy martyrs, said to one another, For the sake of paradise, which we forfeited of all old, let us not cling to our corruptible garments today. Once because of the snake, we put on a garment of mortality. So let us now take it off for the general resurrection. Let us think nothing of the icy frost that melts, and let us hate the flesh, so that we may wear the crowns of victory that are given by Christ God, the Savior of our souls. For his mercy rules over us, and the truth of the Lord enders forever, viewing the torture as pleasure, running to the freezing lake as to warm comforts. The holy martyr said to one another, Let us not shrink from the winter weather, so that that we may escape the fiery Gehenna. Let our feet be burnt so they can dance forever. Let our hands drop off so we may lift them to the Lord. And let us have no pity for our mortal nature. Let us choose death so that we may wear the crowns of victory that are given by Christ God, the Savior of our souls. No glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. They look at the lake and saw. 
paradise they felt the freezing cold and imagined summer heat your martyrs were mentally unafraid of the tyrant's threats. O Christ our God, brave as they were, they did not shrink from the onset of torture. She awarded the crown of grace both now and forever unto the ages of ages amen I am wholly carried away by the works of darkness O lady and by my own will have marred the beauty of baptism and I the wretch now wear the equipment of one condemned to darkness and therefore I entreat you O all blameless virgin by your might break up all the clouds of my passions save me who am naked and clothe me in the shining robe of immortality
σε δόξα
Let us say with all our souls and with all our mind, let us say. Lord Almighty, the God of our fathers, we pray, hear, hear us and have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Have mercy on us, O God, according to thy great mercy, we pray thee, hear us and have mercy. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. mercy. And we pray for all pious Orthodox Christians. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Can we pray for all holy Orthodox patriarchs and high rocks? Mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Again, we pray for priests, deacons, and for all of our brotherhood in Christ. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Again, we pray for mercy, life, peace, health, salvation, visitation, forgiveness, and remission of the sins of the servants of God, all the pious Orthodox Christians here present, that the Lord will be merciful to them. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Again, we pray for the blessed and memorable founders of this holy church and for all our fathers and brethren who have gone to rest, who hear and who in all the world lie asleep in the Lord. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Again, we pray for those who bring offering and do good work in this holy venerable house, for those who labor and those who serve, and the singers and all the people here present to await your great and rich mercy. Lord, have mercy. For you are merciful God, who loves mankind, and to you we ascribe glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit now and ever and unto the ages of ages. Amen. O Lord, keep us this evening without sin. Blessed are you, O Lord, God of our fathers, and praised and glorified is your name to the ages. Amen. O Lord, let your mercy be upon us, for we have set our hope in you. Blessed are you, O Lord, teach me your commandments. Blessed are you, Master, grant me understanding of your commandments. Blessed are you, Holy One, enlighten me with your commandments. Lord, your mercy is forever. Do not despise the works of your hands. To you is due praise, to you is due song, to you is due glory. To the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and forever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Let us complete our evening prayer to the Lord. Mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and keep us, O God, by thy grace. Lord, have mercy. That the evening may be perfect, holy, peaceful, and sinless. Let us ask of the Lord. Yes, o Lord. Our angel of peace, a faithful God, a guardian of our souls and bodies, let us ask of the Lord. Yes, o Lord. For pardon and remission of our sins and transgressions, let us ask of the Lord. Yes, o Lord for all things that are good and profitable for our souls and peace for the world let us ask of the Lord, yes, o Lord that we complete the remaining time of our life in peace and repentance let us ask of the Lord grant this O Lord a Christian ending to our life painless blameless and peaceful and a good defense before the dread judgment seat of Christ, let us ask the Lord. Commemorating our all holy, pure, most blessed and glorious Lady, the Theotokos and ever Virgin Mary, with all the saints, let us commend ourselves, one another, and our whole life unto Christ our God. To you, O Lord. For you are a good God who loves mankind. And unto you we send up glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit now and ever and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Peace be unto you all. Unto your spirit. Let us bow our heads unto the Lord, O Lord our God, who bowed the heavens and came down for the salvation of the human race, 
look upon your servants and upon your inheritance. For you, the awesome judge, who loves mankind, have your servants bowed their heads and bent their necks, not expecting help from men, but hoping in your mercy and looking for your salvation. Perfect them at all times, especially in this present evening and in, them co and in the coming night from every enemy, from every adverse work of the devil, and from vain desires, and from evil thoughts. Blessed and glorified is the majesty of your kingdom, of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Come, let us purify ourselves by acts of charity and tempered mercy. the good that we have done. Let us left and not know the right hands did. Let not self the fruit of charity, but in secret let us cry to him who knows all secrets. Father, forgive us our trespasses in your love for humanity. I lift my eyes to you, dwell in heaven. Behold, as the eyes of servants look to the hands of their masters, as the eyes of the maidservant look to the hand of her mistress, our eyes look to the Lord our God until he shall have compassion in on us. Come, let us purify ourselves by acts of charity and tender mercy to the poor not sounding our trumpet or making public the good that we have done let the left hand not know the right hand's need. Let not self-esteem scatter the fruit of charity. But in secret let us cry to him who knows all secrets. Father, forgive us 
our trespasses in your love for humanity. Have mercy on us, O Lord, have mercy on us, for we are greatly filled with contempt. Our soul is greatly filled with it. We are a disgrace to those who prosper and a contempt to the arrogant. Martyrs of the Lord, you sanctify every locality and you heal every infirmity. Therefore now intercede that our souls be delivered from the snares of the enemy, we pray to you. Glory to the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In the Psalms David said prophetically, We went through fire and water, and you led us into a refreshing place. And you, O martyrs of Christ, fulfill these words by your actions, for you indeed went through fire and water, and you entered the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, O athletes, forty in number, intercede for us that we may obtain the great mercy. Oh, now and ever, and to the ages of ages, amen. Mm. O Mother of God, I have committed my every hope wholly unto you. Keep me under your shelter. Mm. Good evening. It is so joyous to be together as Orthodox Christians, our Pan-Orthodox brothers and sisters. We welcome you this evening to our cathedral. Father James Rusikis, the Greek Orthodox Vicar of Tampa Bay, will be offering a brief homily, and then Father Joe from Tampa will be talking about our ministry that we will be collecting for this evening, and then we will begin our procession outside. When it comes time for the procession, the procession will be led by the archons of the Ecumenical Patriarchate, followed by the altar boys, the chanters, the clergy, and the faithful. And we will exit directly out the main doors of the church, turn right. We will go around the block, as we have in the past years, and we will line up on the front steps of the cathedral to proclaim the truth of orthodoxy publicly for all to hear. Good evening to you all. I don't know how brief this will be, Father, but let's begin. In the name of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. It is, an, it is obvious to all that we are living in a time of tremendous change. Life is vastly different than it was in the 40s and 50s and 60s and 70s years ago. For we, including myself, who were born before 1945, are survivors. Survivors. Think about the changes that my generation has seen. Born before TV, before penicillin, before polio shots, frozen foods, Xerox, plastic, contact lenses, 
computers, cell phones, and iPads. We lived before there was radar, credit cards, laser beams, and the ballpoint pen. Things that the present generation take for granted. We lived before dishwashers, clothes dryers, electric blankets, air conditioners, grip dry clothes, and even before man went into space and walked on the moon. Fast food was something you ate during Lent. Time sharing meant togetherness. No computers, no condominiums. A chip meant a piece of wood. Hardware was hardware. And, and it was sold at Ace. And software wasn't even a word at that time. Who had heard of pizza, McDonald's, and instant coffee? With a nickel, dad could ride the public transportation, use the pay phone to call home, and when they answered, it was a party line. Buy a soft drink or enough stamps to mail a letter and two postcards. A new Chevy Coupe sold for $600, but who could afford to buy one? Oh, what a pity that was, because gas was only 10 cents a gallon. Back then, grass was something that was mowed. Coke, a soft drink, and pot was something you cooked in. No wonder my generation became confused, but we survived. In this world, however, there is still one thing that hasn't changed. This is the Sunday of Orthodoxy. Not because other Sundays are not days during which our Orthodox faith is not declared or lived, but rather because we are challenged today to rededicate ourselves with greater zeal and greater effort. This is the time to take a long and a deep look into our faith, an ancient faith, the faith of our fathers, the unchanging faith of the Orthodox Church. The belief of the Orthodox Church has not changed, and it is the same today as it was 2,020 years ago. Today, the Sunday of Orthodoxy, we celebrate and are proud to raise our heads and proclaim to a world of change that we hold on to the unchanging Christian faith, that we belong to the Mother Church of all churches. We are challenged today with a threefold obligation. First of all, to remind ourselves of this religious heritage that is ours, what we call orthodoxy. To give honor to those who through the centuries lived, sacrificed, and died for Christ's church. This morning's epistle reading talked about that. To rededicate ourselves to Christ and to be witnesses to the orthodox faith. From a historical point of view, the institution of this holiday called the Sunday of Orthodoxy involved from a dispute about the use of icons in the church. You know the history. Yes, the glory of the Orthodox Church is the presence of the beautiful icons and the imposing iconostasio, the icon screen. But the meaning of today is more than icons. These icons not only provide a religious and mystical feeling, <coughs> but remind you to be fully aware of your religious treasure of the Orthodox faith and that you are the icon of 
Christ. The words of Christ in the gospel lesson from the divine liturgy this morning were not just for Philip, but an invitation to all of us to come and follow him and like Philip to go out and to speak to others about Christ and ask them to come and see. Come and see. How strange it is that we speak about great heroes of sports, science, politics, not to mention the entertainment people, but our lips seem to be sealed when it comes to mentioning the precious name of names, Jesus Christ. So, this evening, may you leave this church, the cathedral of St. Nicholas, more committed to your faith. May you honor the memory of those who handed down this rich heritage. And may you solemnly rededicate yourselves to believe in Christ and to serve him. This is your challenge. Yes, we live in, an, in, a, in a very changing world, but we are blessed to possess the unchanging faith of the Orthodox Church. So remember, when we process outside holding our icons, that you are the icon of Christ. Emulate him. Amen. This is so dangerous. I know, be careful. <laughs> it's like memory lane, that mm -hmm. No microphone, so here. <laughs> It's good to be with you again. Many of you recognize me. I come to you from a place far away where there is no electricity. There is no drinking water. There are no public schools. There are no hospitals. Except for what we as Orthodox Christians give them to help themselves. Orthodoxy is very much expanding in Africa and particularly in Uganda. When I first went to Uganda, I was appalled to see that they had no infrastructure in the north. Everything was in the south because that was a different tribe and that was the tribe that ruled the country. In the north, we have nothing. I used to be able to tell how close we were getting to the medical center. It was usually about eight or nine hours by road after we flew halfway around the world. I could tell how close we were getting by how bad the road was. The worse the road, the closer we were. Where we are, the life expectancy is 54. 54, how many here have lived over 54 years? You're doing better than most of the Ugandans. Child mortality, 10 times the United States. So, having been there and seen that, it was obvious that they needed help to build the medical center. And with the blessing of the Archbishop of Kampala and all Uganda, began to collect money and also to obtain somebody to draw us the plans and so on. And I always say, good thing we didn't know what we were doing. It was going to be a native hut with a nurse and a lab tech. Well, there was some land that a Greek doctor had bought when he came to help the people years before in hopes that one day there would be a medical clinic there. And on it, we built a 3,200 square foot cement building with a metal roof. We opened with a clinician a clinician there is the equivalent of what we would think of a nurse practitioner, but they have no MDs. There are no, I've never met an MD yet in all of Uganda. They have no medical schools. So if you're going to medical school, you'd go to London or to Paris, and then they don't come back, and I don't judge them. I don't judge them. 
I don't know that I'd go back. And so they have clinicians. And they're marvelous in what they can do. So we started with a clinician and a lab tech and a nurse. Well, pretty soon people were walking 20 miles to come to us. Women were walking that far to have their babies. So then we added a four, 550 square foot um, maternity ward. And we added two midwives. We put in the, with the help, this is all done by the help of you Orthodox Christians here, especially in this parish. And there was one person who sat right in these pews who came up to me and said, Father, I'll pay for the well. I said, you don't, we don't know what it's going to cost because it all depends on how far down they have to go. And they agreed to pay no matter how far. We have the only fresh water in our entire area. We encouraged them to come and draw water from us. Last time I was there, I saw a little girl. She's a little bitty thing, about 12 years old. She had a five-gallon plastic jerry can and a two-and-a-half-gallon. That's 40, gallons, 40 pounds of water and 20 pounds of water. She filled them up at our well and then carried them home. But it was fresh water, which we encouraged them to use to brush their teeth to drink and to cook with. And worms, intestinal worms, are pandemic. When they come to the clinic, let's say a mother comes with two children, one of them is sick. First thing you do is you tell them to sit down, you give each one a worm pill, and you tell them, yam, yam. It means chew, chew. They have worms. You don't ask them. They have worms. Malaria is our biggest killer up there. And we're fighting a mighty fight against it. We have now gone to using the latest drugs, but it's costing us a lot of money because they're administered intravenous, and we have to now added the cost of the saline solution, the tubing, the needles. But it works, but it's got to be done twice within a 12-hour period. But we're making in And then we teach them about uh, malaria and the mosquitoes, and we give them uh, mosquito nets and teach them how to use them. How many have read about or heard about where they kidnapped 10 year old boys, the rebels, and made them soldiers? Okay? We're at ground zero. We're where you read about this. The rebels were led by Joseph Coney and the Lord's Resistance Army. They would come into a village and they would take one of the 10 year old boys, give him an AK 47, and tell him to kill the parents. The parents would beg the child to kill them. Because if the child did not, the rebels would kill the parents anyway, and then the child. There's many emotional scars. Father George, who's our Ugandan priest, Orthodox priest, was kidnapped, and it took him a year and a half to escape. Fortunately, he didn't have to shoot his parents or anything. They just caught him out in the bush, and he couldn't get away for about a year and a half. So they've struggled. They are the kindest, gentlest, loving people you have ever met and industrious. They live by subsistence farming and they'll grow crops on any piece of land. Any piece of land. So I'm, 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 I made a few notes because Matushka or Presbytera told me I should have notes to tell you uh, some of these things. Um, Okay. We've started a vaccination program, the first one they ever had. You say, why doesn't the government do this? The government is as corrupt as you can imagine. The strongman dictator is in the south, they have oil there, and every dime goes in his pocket. Except, of course, for the army he maintains to keep himself in power. And it doesn't matter why. The matters is, this is Lazarus at our door. And our brothers and sisters, particularly Orthodox brothers and sisters, when I go there and I celebrate liturgy, they're so poor, we're in a mud hut with a thatched roof, but a pretty big mud hut, no iconostas. So I'm standing at the holy table. I have to be very careful I don't step back or I'm going to step on one of them. They, it's packed shoulder to shoulder. There's no window glass, but there's openings, and they're hanging <laughs> into the building. 
They are good, holy, practicing Orthodox Christians who need our help. Every penny that you give, every penny goes to the clinic. When I go, and the nurse practitioner, who's our medical advisor from Colorado, we usually go together, she and I pay our own airfare. We pay our own way to, from wherever we stay. We pay for our own food. We hire our own driver. So that every penny goes to the clinic. We were blessed here this year to open a four-family trip, what would it be, a quadruplex on the property so that we could move the clinicians and the midwives onto the property. They were living in a hut in the village. So I went there last year to set up everything and to meet with the civil engineer. And I, his, his name is Jupiter, you know, like the planet. And I said, Jupiter, it was 250 square feet per family. I'm going to repeat that, 250 square feet per family. I said, Jupiter, is that enough? He goes, oh, Father, that's quite adequate. I said, how big is a native hut? He said, 180 square feet. And here I was feeling like a slumlord. Okay, but we opened it, the bishop blessed it, and now they're living on the campus. Why? Because we're open 24 hours a day, seven days a week with a staff of 10. We can't, they cannot support, the clinic can't support itself. There's no money. We ask them to give something. We get a chicken now and then. We get, a, they'll give a five shilling note. The exchange rate is 3,650 shillings to the dollar. Inflation is rampant there. It's so bad when I wire money, I wire it to our dollar account there and we don't take it out until it's time to pay a bill because the, sh the shillings keep getting worse, less, worth less and less. They can't, they can only do this with the continued support. And I thank the brotherhood on behalf, on behalf of all of these people, the Orthodox Clergy Brotherhood of Greater Tampa Bay and all the Orthodox Christians that it represents. Without you, they would be back to dying early, children dying in their mother's arms at birth, and mothers dying in the process of delivering children. So I cannot thank you enough, and, and to let you really know how much we appreciate all that you do for them, because without you, we can't do this. And we need continued help. We can't just build this and hand them the keys and say, there you go. There's no way. They have nothing, but they're working hard. So what's going to happen now? How do we make out a check? Don't start writing yet, because I got one last thing to tell you. But if you pay by, if you want to give by check, you make it payable just to the my parish, Saint Philip the Apostle. And in the memo section, you put Uganda Clinic, Uganda Clinic, and Africa. And the reason is that way it's, it is an outreach from my parish as well, and it's tax deductible to you, okay? And now I'm gonna ask you. If while I was talking, you were thinking about giving $20, I'm gonna ask you to think about giving 100. If you were thinking about giving 50, I'm gonna ask you to think about giving 500. And if you can afford it, I'm gonna ask you to please, and I beg you, if you can give $1,000 to do that. We have so much more we have to accomplish there. I am waiting for the other shoe to fall. What do I mean by that? If this disease reaches Uganda and northern where we are, there's nothing we're gonna, we're, we're not gonna be able to, to, we can't fight it. It's gonna kill by the tens of thousands. Okay? So, we got to be prepared, though, to fight whatever we can, and that's going to take money for the medicines. All right? We fight mightily against the malaria. I was telling somebody today, I said, you know what happens when there's too many malaria patients and you run out of beds? You know what they do? They double bunk them. Two to a bed. Can you imagine you went to the hospital and they said, Billy Bob or Sally, move over because here's your bedmate. 
But when there's nothing else, you make do with what you can. So please, I beg you to be as generous as, as possible and know that they are appreciative of everything that you do because they're very hardworking people, but they have to make do with only what they have, okay? So if you would now, we have these gentlemen and this lady who are gonna pass among you. Be very generous, please, okay? And uh, thank you again. And I'll see you hopefully at the other Pan-Orthodox Vespers. Once again, the order of the procession will be led by the archons of the ecumenical patriarch, followed by the altar boys, the chanters, the clergy, and then finally the, the, the faithful will go out the front doors around the block and then gather on the front steps of the cathedral to bring, uh, to declare the truth of orthodoxy. forgiveness of our transgressions, O Christ our God. Of thy good will thou wast pleased to ascend the cross in the flesh and deliver thy creatures from bondage to the enemy. Therefore, with thankfulness, we cry aloud to Thee. Thou hast filled all with joy, O our Savior, for Thee this come to
paintings, in thoughts, in sacrifices, in temples, in icons, on the one hand bowing down and worshiping Christ as God and Master, on the other hand honoring the saints as the true servants of the Master of all, and offering to them new generation. This is the faith of the Apostles. This is the faith of the Fathers. This is the faith of the Orthodox. This is the faith which has established the universe. Who is so great the God as our God the I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of the Father before all ages, light of light, true God of true God, begotten not made, of one essence with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. He was crucified for us under Pontius Pilate, suffered and was buried, rising again on the third day according to the Scriptures, and coming again in glory to judge the living and dead, his kingdom shall have no end. And in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, who together with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who spoke through the prophets. In one, a holy Catholic and apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Lord, Again. Tropadion. We venerate thy most pure image, O good one, and ask forgiveness of our transgressions, O Christ okay. our God. forgiveness of our transgressions O Christ our God of thy good will thou was pleased to ascend the cross in the flesh and deliver thy creatures from bondage to the enemy therefore with thankfulness we cry aloud to thee thou hast filled all with joy O our Savior for thou didst come to save the world we venerate thy most pure 
image, O good one, and ask forgiveness of our transgressions, O Christ our God. Of thy good will thou wast pleased to ascend the cross in the flesh, and deliver thy creatures from bondage to the enemy. Therefore, with thankfulness, we cry aloud to thee. Thou hast filled all with joy, O our Savior, for thou didst come to save the world. Tom des matoni mon Christem potheos Vulisigar ivdokisas Sarkip anelthin en tos tavrom Inarisikus eplasas Hectus dektis dulias tu ekthro Othen efkaristos vos Karase pliros ta panda o sotirimon para genomenos istos oseton cosmo. Lord, now let thy servants depart in peace according to your word. For mine eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared before the face of all people, a light to lighten the Gentiles, and a glory to your people Israel. Holy God, holy mighty, holy mortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy mighty, holy mortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy mighty, holy mortal, have mercy on us. Glory to the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. All Holy Trinity, have mercy on us. Lord, cleanse us from our sins. Master, pardon our transgressions. Holy One, visit and heal our infirmities for your name's sake. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Glory to the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, with now and ever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give, Give us this day our daily bread, and, and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as, we as we forgive those, those who trespass against, against us. us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and ever unto the ages of ages. Amen. I mean, the, the holy martyr suffered painful tortures for your sake, O Lord. Be compelled by what they endured, and heal our every pain. We entreat you as the only one who loves humanity. Glory to the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Both now and forever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. When Gabriel had uttered, Rejoice to you, O Virgin. Then with a voice was the Lord of all, Becoming incarnate. In you who are, whom the holy ark of old, Prefigured as righteous David, it said, you carried your creator and proved to be more spacious than the heavens. Glory to him who dwelt inside of you. Glory to him who came forth from you. Glory to him who through you childbirth has set us. Free. 
Lord of mercy, 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 Lord of mercy,
Um, we, we can't access them right now, um, and I won't go further into that. But in any case, um, even if we could, some dioceses are forbidding the use of books. So we, so you still might not have, so even if we had the books, um, so in those ones that aren't, the text needs to be provided because we don't have the books. So if you're the priest and you're hosting, or you're the parish and you're hosting, please help the priest uh, get together books if you want it, if your diocese allows it. Um, and don't make people take a book if they don't want to. <laughs> I guess. I don't know. It's it's rather confusing right now. Okay, but that's what happens when we have a major virus uh, scare. So, in any case, um, God bless you all. I, I'm very happy to see uh, you all here to, uh, to for us to celebrate our faith together, and I hope to see you in future weeks. And with that, I bid you adieu. We'll see you all next door for coffee. Is there like little refreshments over there? Yeah. Okay.